Well, good morning. You guys have to deal with Sue this morning. Amen. I'm excited that I felt like coming this morning. I didn't go to yesterday and never told my back. But God's in control. Like I said earlier, say happy Father's Day for all the daddies. And dad to be, and maybe his mom is playing the role of both dad and mom. And that does happen nowadays. And it goes the other way. But the one scripture I want to be my main scripture today is Proverbs 22, verse 6. Very familiar scripture. A lot of us know this. A lot of us have probably even quoted it and done it. I don't know. But Proverbs 22, verse 6, if you're able to stand and Reverence to the Lord. 22, verse 6. This is going to be my main scripture. i got a couple of them I may throw out there. but It says, Train up your child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Very powerful scripture. If you don't mind, Brother Jason, will you pray over the message this morning, please? Oh, gracious love, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just love you. We're so thankful to be in the house, God. We pray, God, that you send out the Amen. To be, no, I, I often think on Father's Day, you no, know, think of different fathers. But if I was to ask you, who's the most precious father in your life? Come on, God. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, I thought, come on, God, say my father in heaven. You know that I like that thing about that the, the verse that says, "Our Father who art in heaven." That should be our goal, is to always focus on our Father who art in heaven. Amen. And I thought about that. I, I know we as Christians, we know our Father is our main, our main man. That's what we need to go to, right? But did we ever think about the, who is the, the greatest earthly father? And I always like to go back to Joseph. If you really break it down with Joseph, the woman he loved becomes pregnant. And he's not the father. But yet he married her. And he took care of her. But the greatest thing that I, I really think about, and I hope this don't offend anybody, but he stayed committed to allow her to remain a virgin until she gave birth. I know that maybe it sounds corny, but you stop. If you marry somebody, you no, know, you want to be with them. And stuff. But he did. He stayed faithful. He respected her enough to fulfill the father's will. Now that is a great man. And maybe y'all don't look at him, but I thought that man, he was awesome. No, he could he could have been ugly about it, but he didn't. He stayed with her, he remained with her, he kept her pure to our, our Savior was born. That is awesome. Got to think about it. Maybe I'm weird. I, I am weird, you know that. But this morning I want to think about our father. He needs to be attentive. He 
He needs to pay attention to his family's needs, his children's needs. You know, lots of times we think, well, they're children, they don't understand them. It, it ain't bothering them. It is, more than you realize. Look at the suicide rate of children. Not just adults, children, little children. I read a deal where like a six-year-old killed himself because kids were making fun of us. We need to be attentive to our children. Take time to, and, and focus on what they're going through. Just because they're a child, don't they're not going through things. Fortunately, there's the school system, the kids are very mean. And they can be very ugly towards the kids. The T, be a teacher. Dad, what are you teaching your children? The te teaching is all these, all the words that come up with all blend together. You need to be a teacher. What what you're teaching? Are you teaching them to love your wife so they know when they they get ready to have a girlfriend that they're treating that person right? Are you teaching them that we need to be in the Lord's house when the doors are open and worship together with our family and church members? Amen. Eight stands to be a helper. Don't just go and say, well, I'm the dad and this is the way it's going to be. <laughs> I know a lot of dads that way. It's my way or no way. It's my way or hit the highway. Well, I got news for you. Sometimes you've got to learn what your child's going through. Your child, your child will do his best to be like you in general. No, no, they look up to dad. I want to be just like my dad. Do they really want to be just like their dad? Yeah. That's something you think about. Yeah. If they're following in your footsteps, are they good footsteps? Is it something they can be proud to say, I'm like my dad? <coughs> Amen. E. e, be an educator. <coughs> you have to educate your children. So, I think it's worse if it's a boy. You gotta be tough and rough and get out there, man. You can show them you're you're a man. The hardest thing that hit me one time, me and Dean had just gotten together, and uh, we went up to the cemetery to see his, where his dad was buried at, which is the same place where me and Dean's gonna be buried. It's a family cemetery. And while we were standing there, Dean was just struggling. You could see his hand in his pocket. I said, "What is wrong? Why don't you just cry?" Well, I can't cry. Why? Because I'm a man. I said, Jesus wept. Don't y'all don't ever tell your son he can't cry. To me, that's 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 just pure wickedness. No, you don't want your son to be a titty babe. I mean, a baby. I'm sorry. But you know, he, he let him raise up to know he can have feelings. He can hurt and he can shed a tear when needed. And. When I said that he finally, he just kind of cried a little bit, but he was just such a man, he could cry. Uh, I might reach through the grave and slap his dad and mom the right side. Why do you tell that to your dad? Please don't ever tell your son he can't cry. Also, the R stands for be resourceful. What resources are you teaching your son or your daughter? What You need to give them the resources that when they have a problem, they can come to the altar and pray about it. They can go into the Word of God and you'll find the answers. If you don't, I'll help you. Like I said, all these words kind of, kind of better, all blend together to say that, Dad, you're educated. To me, the biggest struggle is being an educator and a teacher because it does make a difference what you teach your children. Train up your child in the way to go when he's older, you will not go for it. Train up your child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That is what you call planting a seed in me. All four of my children were in church at one time. All four of them were involved in the church at one time. All of them had been to the altar at one time. They've done some kind of work in the church. I have one child left that's going to church when she can, that's Tabitha. Carol, him and his wife, they said, if, if his wife don't go, he won't go. That's another thing. Don't teach your kids. You go and do what God wants you to do. I know. Just because the spouse or somebody else don't go, pray for them or go ahead and tell them. 
Because, you know, when you come, you're setting an example. Amen. 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 You've got to show them. So, I can remember, I know it says in the Bible that, if you, you know, if you pray, if you plant the seed, the seed will not go forth. I know one day it's my kids to be back in church. The seed's been planted, and what's wrong with that seed right now, it's got a lot of dirt, it's got a lot of the world weeds on top of it, but the seed's still there. So we got to work on pulling the weeds away. And we as a parent know we have to be careful when we pull those weeds. Because being careful, they're going to bug up and go against you. So every chance, and I know every parent here is dealing with it, and in case you get it, you can kind of throw in, you know, when you need to go to church or your things would be better if you got in church. I know I do. I have to be careful with my kids. If I say too much, they're going to buck up on me and they're going to prove to me that they ain't going to do it. But I know a God that I can turn to and believe and trust that he says they'll come in. And I trust that. It's like the song I sing a lot, my mama's prayer. I may not see it, and it may take me dying for my kids to come in, but I know my prayers are going to be answered. I know God will see it through. Amen. You can't give up. I'm looking at my notes. I'm ready. Yes, I'm cute. I got to have notes. No. I'm being a resource. We need to be dad. You need to be where your son or your daughter or your grandchildren can come to you and say, I, I have a problem. I don't understand this. What can I do? You need to be the resource to guide them and direct them in the right way. Do it in God's way. Too many times, and I'm guilty as a parent, I know what would be good. I know what works. Do it my way. Well, my way may not be God's way. And that's what we need to be the resource to show them that do it God's way. No matter who you are. You may have the right answer. I ain't saying you don't have the right answer. But is it God's way? Is it in the word of God? Can you say, hey, this is what the Bible says? The Bible Everybody knows what the Bible stands for. B-I-B-L-E. Faith instructs before leaving earth. That's true. you got to get in that word. Do I get into it as much as I need to? No. I do get into it. I read the devotional stuff every morning while I drink my coffee. That's kind of my routine. And uh, it does help me start my day. And then sometimes I even do it. I remember to stop and pray. The other day I was making uh, pies and stuff for bake sale. And everything I did was backwards. I was about to have a meltdown. And I literally stopped in the middle of the kitchen. I said, Lord, help me. Guide me in direction. This is for you. For your honor and glory. I sell this for the church. And help me that I don't mess them up. Whatever. And when I took that time to stop, then everything started falling into place. You ever done that? Be going to the day and everything's just going crazy. And you think, "Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me stop and pray a minute." Prayer is a powerful tool. Prayer, when you pray, you will not go wrong. I do believe sometimes when you pray, if you're praying for the wrong answers, God's going to turn and show you that is not the way we need to do it. It's not going to work.
That's the uncle's up there. I'm praying for you. I don't understand what you're going through, Jan, but you know what? I'm praying for you. I had your back, honey. You hear me? I love you. We need to support one another. I can honestly say that when Sister Marie was here and she sat on that front pew, I know she had her husband's back. I'm sure she probably had to tell him a few things that she thought was right. He probably had to tell her a few things he thought was right. But they worked out. I never seen them, them any like any hard feelings between them. Now I don't know what happened at home, but in the church, this the, this a loving couple you see there support one another. And the church was their main priority. Their God. God was their main priority in this church. Yep. Amen. I I believe it was, but like I said, educator. Remember again, just be an educator. What are you teaching your children? What are you teaching your wife as a husband? What are you teaching your family as the role model? It makes a difference. Who does it who 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 gets most of the blame if their family falls apart and things ain't working right? They're gonna go hit that. What? You can't get your house in order? You can't do this in your house? Why are you not yes, I know the women wear the pants in the family. I said, Larry Grinnell. But it takes a teamwork. But if you go and look at people in, in general, if a family's falling apart most times, it's going to fall back on the man. They're going to blame the man. Because you're the man in the house. Can't you take care of your household? You can't take care of your wife and kids? I've seen it. Everything's blamed on the man when things fall apart. Then when the man says, that ain't me, then they're going to point their fingers at the wife. But it takes humor. It takes two. And then it takes three. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost be with you. You've got to have that in your marriage for things to work. Be the resource. Make sure that your children, when they're seeking resource, that they're getting the right resource from you. That poor baby's on lost her shoe. Like a little horse, she's new shoe. Be the resource that your children. And it ain't just the father, it ain't just the mother. It also helps his grandparents. I have my grandkids a lot. When the Shelby and them were little, they, they sat in my house all the time and was there. What kind of resource was I for to set them? I hope I was good. Shelby told me the other day, she said, Mom, if something happens to you, I want your Bible. I said, Oh. That just touched my heart. And she, I gave it to her. She uses it now here at church. What kind of resource are you? Do your kids come to you and say, oh, I believe. I'm... Dad, can I have your Bible or can I read your Bible? Dad, will you come pray with me? How many of you can honestly say if your child came to you, your grandchild, or even your wife said, will you pray with me? Would you stop and take it serious? Amen. I have literally been in the deepest valley I could be in and asked for prayer. Somebody prayed for me. I, that's what I was talking about laying on the hands. That means a lot to me. When I come up here and I say I need prayer and I can feel the hands of my brothers and sisters in Christ laying their hands on me, that, that revives my spirit so much. And I'll be honest with you, I've had people lay their hands on me, I thought, oh, that's cold. I told people, if you're not serious about my needs and want to pray for me, please don't pray. Don't come over and act like you want to pray for me. I want people that believe in the power of prayer. I want people that believe that God can move that mountain for me. I want people that know that my God is a healer, that my God can do anything that I set before him. Because the blood of Calvary covers me, and I, I got that promise in the word of God. Like I said, with Joseph, my hat goes off to him. I respect him so much as a man that took on that obligation for our Savior to be born as the Lord God wanted him to be. That, that, that's commitment. That's fulfillment. He trusted God and believed in God and did what God asked him to do. I can honestly say, stop the thing.
any of us that was in that situation could we handle it like Bill did? I'll be honest, I don't know if I could have. I don't know if I could have. But I guess I could have done if I trusted God enough, right? You gotta trust your father. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 4. Like I said, I wanted the Proverbs to be my main scripture because it's important that we uh, do what the Bible teaches us. We've been teaching, uh, been teaching a lot to us about Ephesians, and it's a good book of the Bible. Six of four. I hope I got this right. Sometimes I, I write stuff down and think I did, I didn't. All right. Ephesians chapter 6, the first verse says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is his right. And the, verse 4 says, And he, Father, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admiration of the Lord. Did I say that right? Okay. Admiration of the Lord. This is the important scripture because, you know what? Anybody know what it means in this? Don't provoke your children to wrath. Wrath is anger. Do not make your child, don't raise them up to be an angry, bitter child. It makes a difference in how you're raised. Brother John has spoken many times about he was raised in an alcoholic parents and cussing and stuff like that. To me, I felt like he was raised up in kind of an angry situation. But he gave his heart to God and turned it around. So when his grandkids and children come around, he, he teach them to grow up in love. I've, I've been around where if your kid's mean and had a cousin, never failed. He had a, a two boys that were just about a year apart. And every time he went over there, he wanted those boys to fight each other. And his early was good to make them fight. They didn't want to fight, but he wanted to make them fight. He thought it was fun to watch them fight. I used to get so aggravated. I was like, why are you doing that? You know? Those kids end up, you know, they, then the boys got older, they fought each other all the time until they got married and stuff. Because they were taught that. Fight each other. So, I mean, I think kids are asking, it's kind of cute. But yet, too, you need to teach them to love one another. Hug one another. How many times you kids do something wrong, you say, all right, so you love them, hug them. My kids hate that. Make them kiss and make up. I don't want to do that. I don't care. You're going to do it. That's the worst time for your look to make a kiss and hug up. Hug and make up. Be careful when you raise your children. How do you teach them? You teach them to be hateful. You teach them to be hateful, they're going to be hateful adults because that's what you call them until the love of God gets a hold of them. If you have a child that's not in church and you know that's where they need to be, which we all do, it makes a big difference. And so, raise your child. Like I said, be faithful, be attentive, be that teacher, be that helper, be that educator, and be the resource that child needs. Be the father that our father wants you to be. Don't be the father I want you to be, because, I, I, like I said, I might have my uh, preference of how you should be, but be what the father wants you to be, amen? I'm done, so you know, just continue to pray for me, guys.